As soon as you give politicians power, any kind of power that didn't exist previously, if they can figure out a way to force you into carrying something that lets you enter businesses or lets you do this or lets businesses open, historically, they are not going to give that power up. They find new reasons to use. We have to protect those freedoms at all costs, whether you agree with people's choices or not, because it is the foundation that this country was founded on. Freedom. This idea of freedom. There's so many people that think it's frivolous, it's not important, it's not the main thing that we should be focused on, but it is the literal structure that allows this country to be so fucking amazing. Every single country that's ever existed other than the United States, up until 1776, every fucking country that has ever existed was run by dictators, all of them. This is the first experiment in self-government that actually worked, and it created the greatest superpower the world's ever known. It created the greatest cultural machine, the greatest machine of art and creativity and innovation right in here. And how did it do that? It did it through freedom. And as soon as you see something, anything that comes along and inhibits your freedom, you should be very cautious of that thing. You should be very suspicious. Because anything that comes along that can inhibit your freedom is, by definition, anti-American. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great week, you know. I got booted from my own party's, uh, uh, you know, event. But we're not, we're not going to get excited about it. We're going to have a good time. Welcome to the Bullface Truth. I'm David Medina. I'm so happy you joined us. Uh, we have an amazing guest in studio today. We have a lot of important topics to talk about. And, um, I, I, you know, we have, set, what is it, Dima? 18 days until the election. Let me tell you something. If you're out there and you're thinking your vote doesn't count and you're one of those, I'm election integrity, I don't know election integrity, my vote doesn't count. Shut up for a, for a second. Okay, go vote. Because we need every person to vote red. And yes, even after I got kicked out of the event, I'm still telling people to vote for Christine Drazen because I'm not a spiteful person. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not one of those people that gets all crazy and, 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 and you know, narcissistic. We're still going to vote for Christine Drazen no matter what because she's the better candidate. She's better than Tina Kotek. She's better than Betsy Johnson. We can't, although I, as much as I like Betsy Johnson, guys, we can't trust her because she's been a Democrat for 20 years. And, and, but let me tell you something. We, we, did you watch the debates last week or, or yesterday? I mean, Betsy Johnson is by far the best, the, the, the best on those debates. But that being said, Tina Kotek, t holy cow, Tina Kotek. Christine Drazen has the best chance to win this. According to the polls, it's a scientific fact. You guys saw me say that. Out of the four polls that we've seen, independent polls, these are non-biased, non-part, not tied to the, to the campaigns at all. They're all saying that Christine Drazen is, is ahead. And not only that, but Betsy Johnson, guys, listen, Oregonians, Betsy Johnson is down double digits. Now, in politics, if you're down by more than eight points, uh, it's pretty much it's pretty much impossible for you to to win that election. She's down by like double digit, like 16 points right now. So let's let's pull our heads out and let's vote for Christine Drazen and those election integrity people. I get you. I get it. We need to secure our elections, but your vote does count and we can't let them. If they are going to cheat, we cannot let we, we, we got to just flood it with votes. So it's harder and harder for them to do any funny business. You get me? OK, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, we're here live in Portland, Oregon. I have a great guest with me. Um, I've known her for a whole two weeks. Um, we, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with her Twitter. She puts out some fire tweets. I had to have her on the show. Um, go to, go to the display real quick. This is Heidi Bri uh, Brionis. She's here in studio. This is her Twitter right here. You can see, uh, hi Heidi. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> We're bringing in Heidi a little bit early, but, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's, uh, going for Christine, right? You're going for Christine Drazen. Oh Yeah. 100%. So, so Heidi, you, you, um, tell us about yourself. Cause I don't even know. I wanted to save this for the show. Tell me about yourself. Where are you from? I know you ran for Congress as a Democrat, right? I did. In okay. 2020. That's right. And then, uh, now, but now you're going for Christine Drazen. What's, what's changed? Why are you all of a sudden going Republican? I mean, I don't feel like I've changed as much as the democratic party has changed. So I ran as a Democrat in 2020, yeah. mainly because we have closed primaries in the state of Oregon, yeah. and that's how how it was. I'm currently declined to state. I'm not a member of any party, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going for Dres and I can explain, but uh, I mean, I'm from Southern California. I was a teacher. I lived in Taiwan, South Korea, uh, all kinds of things. As a, as a teacher, or why did you? Why yeah, did you? an English teacher. I taught English as a second language, wow. uh, so I did that after college. I was supposed to go to law school, and I interned at a few law offices, and I 
fucking hated it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be miserable for the rest of my life. So what did I want to do? I wanted to travel. Um, figured out, oh, hey, I can teach English in other countries and that, you know, can fund my my travels. Now, you have a quite you have quite the influence on Twitter. You have yeah. about 14, almost 15,000 followers. Uh, you you are very you're, you're I actually like 17 I, doesn't no, isn't set, 17. Oh, my gosh. That's a sin. I'm <laughs> that's sorry. Okay. Guys. I had a big weekend. So you had know. one job. Uh, <laughs> and Christine Drazen follows you, doesn't she? I don't think so. A lot no? of people do follow me. A lot of a lot of the main people here. I know Andy. Tulsi no, Gabbard Andy. Just no, followed me. Which Andy. Is no, exciting. Tulsi Gabbard follows you. OK. Tim Pool follows me. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> well, you you know, you do put out and you got the blue check mark. How did you get the blue check mark? I ran How for office, man. I got oh, on the ballot okay. and I did the steps. Um, if you're on Ballotpedia, they have a process. Well, they did at the time. I honestly don't know what they do now because I've seen people lose. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people lose their checks lately. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, you just, you know, if you're noteworthy enough. You, They want to know that. You know, you're verified that that's you. Basically. Yeah. But if you're making statements as someone running for office, they better know it's you. Yeah. Well, I think you deserve that blue check anyways, well, even you. if you weren't running for <laughs> office, because I do like some of your tweets. I don't just follow people just because I follow them if they put out good stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have lost their blue check. Pinhead uh, Bill Post that used to be a um, Republican legislator here in Oregon. Now he he uh, exiled to Nevada. Uh, for some reason, I think the redistricting redistrict got him out because he, he knew he couldn't win. But um, uh, yeah, he lost his blue check and he was like distraught about it. He was tweeting about it. I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, me and me and Bill Post have like a we have like a beef, you know, because they can uh, take it away from you whenever they want. But yeah, do you know do you know the situation with like Republicans in the country? Like, do you are you aware of like the establishment, ver like the right, like why they call yeah. people rhinos and stuff? I'm not fully into it. I'm not a Republican, never have been. And but I do know that there's been a shift, obviously. I mean, it's yeah. pretty clear that it's not the same party that it was in the 90s. Um, so, yeah, tell me. No, I mean, I, I for me, it's like I just want we just want our politicians and I'm not like well, with a lot of these people. Like I, I've been pretty open about. I don't associate with Proud Boys or anything like that. I never have. In fact, we actually hate each other. I banned them from our events because they're being idiots and they're being disrespectful. Um, but I will say, um, a, as a voter, I just want my politicians to do to serve us, to do what they were intended to do, to stop giving fifty billion dollars to Ukraine and actually secure our border. I th that's what that's what the you know the I guess you could say America first Republicans believe they believe we should take care of home first we should I believe we should still help these other countries but I don't think we should be given you know taking care of everybody else first before we take care of our own I mean ever mm -hmm. since Biden took over it's been a disaster everything from the with Afghanistan withdrawal I mean are you are you still on the Biden train a little I've bit I've never Please been on the not. Biden train that's actually one reason why I left the Democratic Party because I mean I was for Andrew Yang I like outsiders he was I obviously liked him too. he's obviously a long shot you yeah. know never gonna happen but I love the underdog story and I love that he was not a politician um, so I got into the Yang gang and I was in that and then uh, as soon as he dropped out I decided to run for office um, had a fun run and then when that was over I was like I'm a free agent you know and I'm not voting for Biden <laughs> like, yeah. and people hated it uh, so you kind of keep yeah. an open mind you know a little bit um, I mean obviously I mean I actually hate Biden though I've I hated him forever <laughs> he, he had banned raves which I was a big raver in the 90s and he actually was responsible for banning like my favorite activity when I was like a young when you were getting when um, you're person. getting partying down <laughs> Pastor Brett likes and to say. making it very unsafe and just being generally an authoritarian. What about just his policies now, though? I mean, it's a, what still, a disaster. They're all still, I mean, it's still the same thing. That's what I tried to tell people. I'm like, you. why are you going to vote for somebody that's going to do literally <laughs> like what you're against? Like they're going to be, he's more authoritarian. Like, look at his record. He's racist. Look at his record. You know, he's everything that you're saying Trump is, but times 20 actually, and actually, you know, has the decades of experience being worse than this and doing it and putting these policies in place that led to what you're saying <laughs> the Republicans are doing now. And it's, it makes no sense. I'm like, don't vote for Biden. Like it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've never been for Biden. He has the worst policies I've ever seen. And he's literally, I mean, he's demented. I mean, he's not, yeah. he's not there. It, it may, it inspires me so much because there are a lot of people out there who, you know, you don't really identify with the, you know, classic America first Republicans or even Republicans at all, but you are, are brave enough to stand out there and say, this guy is terrible for the country. And these Democrats have lost their damn minds. Yeah, 100%. That's something, that's something I, I, I admire about you. So, so with the Oregon governor's race, with everything going on, are you voting red down the line? I am going to vote red down the line, um, this year because Democrats have ruined the state of Oregon and it's not the state that it once was. And I know that, um, I've, you know, I came here when I was much younger and I always wanted to live here. Yeah. Um, just it was free. It was beautiful. It was clean. And it's, 
become a trash can. Yeah. So, so what, are, what are the main issues of why you main think issues it's are decline? homelessness for me? Um, yeah. It's number one for me, crime and homelessness and the destruction of downtown just broke my heart. Just mm. walking down there. Um, I mean, you weren't down there with your fist up with, uh, no. during the riots, <laughs> burning down, burning down to no. Ben and Jerry's down there. No, I walked around afterwards and saw a war zone and saw, you know, places yeah. that I love destroyed and it, it was hideous. And I was like, I'm not associated with anything to do with this anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's where, you know, one of the reasons why I had you come on is because I want people to see that there are not, it's not, you know, like the, the media here in Oregon, they're such a disgrace, you know, and they've shown their true colors by endorsing the Oregonian has endorsed Christine or uh, Tina Kotek. I keep mixing up the two. I don't know why they're completely, <laughs> they look completely different. Holy crap. One's a redhead, one's a, a white haired person. Um, but they, they've they've endorsed Tina Kotek and it's shown their true colors because yeah. why are you endorsing her you have even like I read what they what they wrote it's like they can't even give me a good answer it was just like oh we think she has the solutions to the problems to, going right? forward how can you say that it's been four decades Tina Kotek and Kate Brown and all their little crony the little progressive cronies have been in charge for the of this state for so long and look where we're at how do you think they can move us forward you know yeah, they're in pockets with each other. I mean, they're worried about losing, you know, information that they're getting from the Democratic Party. And she's a major member. And the Democratic Party said, you support her. And that's what they do. I mean, I was in the Willamette Week um, interview to be endorsed. It's another beauty of a publication. Um, it was horrible. The guy was like a total asshole and like asked me like ridiculous gotcha questions the whole time. Of course and it was just did. super disrespectful. And I was like, why did you actually invite me right. to this interview right. when you have no... Like, you got to bring me next time because yeah. I know how to talk to these clowns. <laughs> it was so funny. Whenever we did events here in Oregon, uh, the, you would always have someone from the Oregonian or, or like the or like Lam or someone, they would come up and they'd go, hey, we're from the Oregonian. Can we get on the stage and get some pictures? I'm like, actually, you know what's funny? Actually, that no. patch of grass <laughs> over there, that's way over there. You can actually go walk over there. Yeah, you're not welcome actually, here. you can get the hell out of yeah, here. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny how they spin it on us like they're spinning everything in this country. Uh, oh, you know... Uh, democracies at stake and all this kind of stuff yeah, and the gas prices time. is Russia's fault and all this kind of stuff. Biden doesn't have anything to do with it. But, uh, the, you know, they were, they were like, you know, people like say about me that I, I attack the freedom of the press. I don't attack the freedom of the press. I think there needs to be a diverse op opinions are out there left and right. That's what makes us America. You know, there used to be a day in this country you know, the 90s were the golden age, right? The 90s. Oh, can we go back to the 90s? Or even the early 2000s. I mean, the first yes. class that I took, I went to UC Santa Cruz, incredibly left-wing school, but the first class I took was politics and the media. And we basically broke down why the media is trash and they're all owned by corporations and we shouldn't listen to any of it. And that was the left at the time. That was the left-wing perspective <laughs> that, you know, we don't trust these people. Like, they're, they're corporate-owned. Um, and now yeah. you can see that now we're like, oh, yes, whatever you say, you know, daddy, MSNBC. <laughs> So I'm, a, I'm, li I'm in a little bit of a, um, it feels like we're in the kind of a, the same kind of place right now, but on the different spectrums. Mm -hmm. And do you feel politically homeless right now? I'm definitely politically homeless. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Which is why you resonated with Andrew Yang, which is exactly. why I resonated with Donald Trump. Not Makes because sense. I'm a racist or any of this other no. crap that they say, but because they are outsiders. Exactly. So we, we kind of. politicians. Right, right. <laughs> we resonate with two, two right. guys, but they, they also have very different beliefs. And yeah, they're both populists. I mean, right. you know, it's that populist thing. It's like. I definitely yeah, felt it the other night at Drazen's you know? event for sure. Yeah, you get to the heart of it. It's like people want regular people to represent them. People want yeah. to know that you understand who the hell they are. And these elitist politicians don't get it. And they never will. Right. Yeah. Did you see? And it's so funny. Back in the 2000s, you, you know, the liberals used to be against those same elitists and those same corporations exactly. and those same big I mean, pharma that, that's controlling our lives exactly. right now. That's why I considered myself on the left um, <coughs> for so long. But if they go authoritarian, I'm out. You know, that's kind of how it is. It's like. Do you think Trump was authoritarian? Not really. I think that. A bit too much for me on certain issues, but overall like much what? more libertarian. Like what? Um, probably police. I'm pretty, I mean, just any kind of, uh, I don't know, enforcement in that respect. You think Trump was uh, too much for you on that? Like uh, what, 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 what do you mean by that? The police? Uh, just in general, just basically like too authoritarian on enforcement. Mm. Um, but I'm not like a defund the police person like at all. It's just I'm just very much like yeah. fuck the police in general, but I'm not defund them like I do respect them and I do think they do a great job. But at the same time, that's just more of like a Republican kind of thing is like the military, the police, that type of thing just doesn't really vibe as much with me. I'm just more like. Everybody just well, do without their own them, thing. I mean, we wouldn't be America, though, like with the military, right? Yeah, like, no, I support them. Yeah. Like, I just am not like that's just a different vibe. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just that Republican kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's just a little, a little authority, but I mean, a tiny bit, still much more libertarian than any Democrat. Yeah. So, it's just, 
I'm just a bit more libertarian, I think, than a Republican is. That's all. So I, I've worked. So my thing is, I don't say F the police. I say F bad cops that are in there. I don't say F the police as a whole because the institution of law enforcement was is the reason why our country is so success has been so successful and the reason why you've seen such a breakdown of everything is because they've been attacking the police they've been attacking law and order any for any country any civilization to survive there has to be law and order and that's what's made america so you know where where we how far we've come as a country and being the biggest superpower that law enforcement that institutional law enforcement so i can't say f the police but I definitely think that the bad apples need to be weeded out. I definitely uh, think I that mean, people, be, they do uh, some some cops, because yeah. I've, I've seen the videos on TikTok. I've seen the cops I've abuse I've seen it right power. in my face. I mean, it's really? like, yeah, I mean, if you are, I mean, I was. So left, you've had bad experiences with I've them. I've had bad experiences with cops, yeah. I mean, I was wrongfully, you know, detained, arrested. I mean. For what? Uh, drunk in public, but it was not, it was, it was just a crazy, you think crazy You they were experience. just like a witch hunt, kind of, they were just kind of looking. No, they needed to get somebody, mm. and the other person to get was underage, and they didn't want Where that was heat. This? this was in Santa Cruz on oh, campus. Gotcha. Um, they're campus police, so basically, I had a friend who was not 21 mm. who was drinking with me, and she was the one drunk in public, and I ended up taking like the rap for it because yeah. they didn't want the liability of yeah. like dealing with somebody that was underage on their campus, um, and so they got me. And it was a hot mess. And then I saw them do other things. I saw them come in and <laughs> we had like the most hippie, chillest um, protest ever. It was called Tent University. And it was just at the beginning, the, like the entryway of uh, campus. And everybody just basically put tents up and camped there and <laughs> did like their own little hippie university and had their little classes and like slept there. They wanted to sleep there. Yeah. And the university was like, you can't sleep there. I'm like, okay, we're going to sleep there. And then so they, it was just like this protest and they all were sitting there like in circles holding um, hands because the riot cops were coming. And so we're like, well, let's go down there and see what's going on. So we're like over there trying to see what's going on. And these riot cops all come through and like these hippies are just like sitting there. Like this was not like Antifa, like leftists. These are like, <laughs> like chill people like just sitting there and they just came and were like, you know, mobbing on them. So I've just seen so much stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen the cops do things to where I'm like, I don't want to see that kind of overreach. I'm just very libertarian in that way. I just think if you let people do what they need to do and you actually enforce, you know, the right type of laws and you don't waste resources and taxpayer money on, you know, hippies sitting in a circle, then I think that that's a much better use and people yeah. respect cops more if they're actually doing, you know, the right thing. Yeah. So I don't hate cops as people, but I hate the institution. Yeah. Of, you know. Well, because you had a bad experience with them. I mean, let's be fair about it. You had a bad experience. You were unfairly um, treated by, <laughs> by those officers, right? You were, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. It sounds like you were very fair, unfairly targeted and, 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 and treated. My only thing is, is my experience, I've had good and bad experiences with cops. Sure, I've had good ones too. Right. I've had some awesome cops. But, but the, the institution yeah. of law enforcement and how it's supposed to be designed we need it and we have to have it because yeah. if we didn't have it, you that was what you saw in Portland and what broke your heart. I mean, that the, yeah. the, the writing and stuff, that was the result well, of yeah. like the city. I said, I'm not a defund the police yeah. person like in any way, but yeah. I just don't like um, institutions of enforcement. Um, that's all, that's but just they, are needed. they are needed, they are needed, they are needed. Just do your job, do yeah. the job that you were meant to do, like yeah. actually, you know, protect people and don't do what you're told to do if it doesn't make fucking sense because that's the institution part. That's the police commissioner. That's the mayor. That's the people telling the cops what to do. So when I say fuck the police, I mean fuck the institution of the police, not fuck those people because they're awesome people, most of them. But it's just, so, it's the it's the system that they're in. It's yeah. the institution. Well, you have to also remember too that that uh, jurisdictions are different across the, across like the different uh, cities and and, and towns. I mean. Yeah. For instance, I worked with Portland people alongside Portland PD for a few years and I met some of the worst cops, but I also met some of some of the best cops that oh did gosh. their jobs that, that didn't look at people. I've seen some of the best cops take care of the homeless down there with such, in such a respectful way. And I've seen cops treat them like absolute garbage here, here in a small town that we're right outside of Portland, right here, the police force here, they aren't like that. They're, they are respectful. I've seen them deal with people. They are. So it's different per you know yeah. where, wherever you're at obviously yeah. but i think we can both agree on uh there's definitely bad apples out there um yeah and again not about the people like cops individually i have no problem with it's just the institution that i'm not a fan of same thing with the military got no problem with veterans tons of my friends are veterans are amazing people i love them but i don't like war i'm anti-war I think, I think we all are. I mean, I agree <laughs> I with you think i think we, I, I think we i think there's a line that um, yeah, i think the yeah. republicans are a bit more pro-war 
um, than I'm comfortable with. So. Well, it used to be that. Yeah. It, you, it definitely did used to be that, but there has been a major shift in the past three there years has. where there has oh, been like the Democrats are like, I mean, what oh, are they doing in Russia and Ukraine right now? They're not there. Biden and the Democrats are doing nothing but fueling that war by continuing to fund it. In fact, oh, yeah. we saw we saw proof of that when Elon Musk offered an idea to, to have peace between Ukraine and Russia. And he was shot down and he was called all kinds of the pro Putin by, by, yeah. by the government. Well, I mean, that's the, that's what they've established. They've established that whatever, you know, the current thing is that they're supporting. If you come out against that, then immediately you're an enemy of the state. And yeah. that's the, that's what's going on. And that's what's been going on. And that's why I can't associate with well, that. Well, Democrats of today are definitely pro war too. I, I never no, thought I'd see the No, they've been pro war for a long time. I mean, they are really no, like in your face. No, they've been pro war for a long time. Neoliberalism yeah. has been around for quite some time. I and mean, it's, yeah. it's been creeping up. And I mean, the fact that Republicans are turning anti war is amazing and i'm proud of that and i think that's great um i think because we lost our trust i think the weapons yeah. of mass destruction back in 2007 when we when we uh should we shouldn't have invaded iraq i was for it back then because i want i, I mean back then for it, but yeah. right right and, and <laughs> I, I, I was for it, it yeah. because 9 11 was still fresh and i was like look wherever there's a threat i don't want another 9 11 to happen and they said there was weapons of mass destruction turns out there wasn't i think that's where why a lot of republicans are kind of especially america first republicans because we've kind of lost our trust because bush kind of screwed us over because we we all kind of backed him back then you know with with going into iraq and then we found out how much of a crap show that was and how much he lied to us and how much there wasn't weapons of mass destruction they, he just wanted to go in there and kill saddam because he was talking crap about his dad yeah. or he put out a hit on his dad so they've lost our trust well so, i respect that yeah. i mean because i was anti-bush i even wore like some cute little shorts that said fuck bush on them and see i was really opposite cute. i wore um, bush <laughs> bush 04 bush 2000 i was all about bush oh uh, no i couldn't stand it i don't like neocons i don't like neoliberals but i, I don't think like what we're war. seeing here yeah. though between like even this conversation yeah. i think what we're seeing is that and this is why they hated trump so much because we're starting to see that it's not about Republicans and Democrats so much as it is about the elite versus the regular people. Yeah. There is a group of elitists out there that want to keep us in war, that want to keep us divided, that want to keep us hating each other. They yeah. don't want these kind of interviews to happen. No. They don't They don't want us coming together. And so that's why they're attacking people. That's why they're attacking Trump. That's why they're attacking. And, and don't get me wrong. I don't want to defend Trump on everything. You know, I wish he would humble up a little bit. I've, I've said that before. Uh, I liked his policies, but the way they're coming after him. And the that way they're coming after him is, is insane. It makes it, no sense. It's insane how they come after him and they didn't come after Hillary. And I hate the whataboutism, but I, I, it blows my mind how they, how much they're coming after him. They raided a president's house for what? Have we even still found out any evidence that they've found in that damn raid? Where the, the hell game. are the, and this is why I we're mean, so upset with these Republicans. This is why we call them rhinos because where the hell are the Republicans at? Where are the Republicans at? Uh, 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 you know, they say, oh, once we take the house, once we take this, it's like, dude, do something right now, man. I know, I know they have the house. I know the Senate's not yours, but like these establishment Republicans and I'm talking and we can talk about establishment well, they're basically Democrats, Democrats. Too. I mean, exactly. They're know, all talk and they yeah. all, they all, they're, they're just here. They don't actually, they don't actually do things, which is why we had $2 gas when Trump was in, was a president. Cause he got things done for us. And that's what I loved about Trump. That's he put true. the American people. I first. mean, he put women first and that's my favorite <coughs> thing probably that he did. Except when he was grabbing him. But, um, well, no, no I'm, but, I'm but legally I'm though, I mean, where, where it counts, I mean, you know, he passed pro women legislation or right. rather executive right. orders that the Biden actions, right when he was in over. office, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't judge people personally when they're in executive power more than I judge how they're, you know, yielding that power. Mm -hmm. um, if they are a bad person, then okay, they're a bad person, but what are they doing with their position of power? Yeah. Um, and I do think Trump had a lot of great policies. So that's Real quick, because I have it on here and I told people yeah. I, I would talk about, did you see my Twitter tirade, the temper tantrum? I, the I didn't. Did you delete it or something? I, did I was delete trying to, okay. <laughs> I, thought, I, was trying I, to find I woke it. up I'm convicted. Like, Where is I, this I tirade? Yeah. You're going to find out about me. I'm going to tweet a lot of stuff. You might, you probably should screenshot them. In fact, the Oregonian and all these cron the cronies are probably care. watching this right now and they're probably like, oh, we should probably start with screen. Because they, 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 they haven't blocked me for some reason. I'm the toughest on the Oregonian more than anybody. I haven't been blocked. And it's so funny because when uh, Dallas heard of the uh, ORP resigned, the ORP chair, and I put out his letter probably sooner than I should have. Um, uh, they, they took it from me and they quoted me or they, they gave me credit for sharing that, but then they made sure to smear my name after that. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, t my Twitter tirade, tirade, what, what is wrong with me tonight? dude? I can't <laughs> even talk. Holy crap. <laughs> got hit with, I got hit with the mumble stick. So I went to the Christine Drazen event the other night and I was really excited to go. I, uh, it yeah, was with the Glenn Youngkin, right? Be Were you there? Too. No. So uh, I, I've had, she's I've, cool. she's hot too. I've had I'm my, <laughs> I've had my concern. <laughs> okay. Let's chill out. 
Uh, this is a, okay. It's a family show. Family show. Uh, Kids are watching. In the name of no. Listen. So <laughs> so I was excited because I've had a lot of concerns about Drazen. I've got a lot of concerns. I've been very Do you? Pu- I've, really? I've, well. I've been very in open. In comparison about it. to who though? I well, mean, well, not not now, okay. but like back then. Okay. Gotcha. So back in the primaries, I was back in Bridget Barton. Okay. Okay. I've, I've yeah. Yeah. So so there was like t- 2000 candidates running for Republican because they all thought they could win. I don't know. I don't understand why. I don't understand what uh, some of them. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. But <laughs> there was one. Get the, so there was one. There was Bridget Barton and I was backing her. But the Dra- Drazen is part of that establishment, in my opinion. And it's not even an opinion. She's, it's a fact. I mean, she yeah. she she's voted for some of this woke stuff. Um, I, I don't want to go bashing her because we want her to win. But I've had some concerns about her. And I've been Fair. pretty open about it. And I, they even blocked me on Instagram. The Christine Drazen account oh, blocked really? me on Instagram okay. because I was like trying to, because I was propping wow. up Bridget. It was politics. I think they yeah. would understand, right? Um, but what, since she's won, I mean, I've put all that aside. I put all my pride aside, which is not what a lot of Republicans are. A lot of Republicans are going with, with Betsy uh, because because of what I'm talking about, about That's Drazen. Fine. Because Drazen's establishment, Betsy. she's I, a rhino. I don't think it matters, but. Right. It, well, it, it could, though. It could, mm-hmm. which is why, I mean, Drazen's still within that margin of error, though. That's what I'm saying. The margin of error is plus or minus four. She's only up by three three to four points. So uh, Don't you think Betsy is, like, split, like, almost equally, Democrat and Republican? I would say I know she's taking of- more Democrats because it wouldn't be that close because the Democrats outnumber Republicans in Oregon by, like, 300,000 registered voters. And so for in order for it to be that close, she has to be pulling more Democrats. Betsy does. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I yeah. think her staying in is, is only good. So, I mean. Yeah, no, Betsy needs to stay in. Yeah. But uh, so, I, so I went yeah. to that event and I've been I've been openly telling people to vote for Drazen. There's been people yeah. for days in my DMs. Who do I go for, Betsy or Drazen? Because, <laughs> you know, Drazen's not like a popular America first Republican here. She's she's part of the political kind of elite right. a little bit, um, which is fine. So putting that all aside. And so I went to the event the other night and um, was happy to be there. And a buddy of mine got me a VIP bracelet. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I actually told him I'm, I'm good. I don't want to do the VIP. I just want to kind of be there just to support and get some video, get the word out there. Okay. And, uh, and so, uh, he, he brought me the bracelet at the event and I was like, oh, okay, what the heck? And I guess the, you know, people standing behind her, you know, on, on the bleachers, that's where the VIP was. So I went back in the VIP, they let me in. And then one guy came to me in the middle of a crowd and was like in the middle of everybody, not the person closest to the door, came to me and okay. said, hey, we're actually over capacity here and we need to have you We need to have you leave. And I was like, I just kind of chuckled. And I was, was like, oh, okay. the person that runs the Instagram account or something? Probably. Like, I don't <laughs> know. It, was some, it was some dude, her, her okay. team. And this is my problem is like I've set all of my 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 concerns and everything. My swallowed my pride, all my all my problems I've had with her to support her. And they pull something like that. And they also didn't allow, I don't know if you guys know this, but they also didn't allow one of their own state reps who was recently arrested for public intoxication to be on that stage. They pulled him down too. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. And, and it's the Democrats. If you look at the Twitter account on, on Oregon Democrats, they're still calling her MAGA Republican. They're still calling her an extremist. So like, that's all I they mean, got. They got nothing. That's right, desperation. Exactly. Like that's like abortion is like, that's the topic. Cause they're desperate. Exactly. That's the topic you throw out Even when you're desperate. Even though it's not a non-issue here in Yeah, Oregon. exactly. That's the topic you throw out when you're super desperate and you know, you're losing. Yeah. It's like, it's like when, whatever, if you say you're for women's rights and they're like, ah, oh, you're a transphobic. You're like, okay, so you're desperate. Like you got nothing else to exactly. like say to me. And the <laughs> like, smart people yeah. who actually pay attention like us we uh and, and a lot of people see through it and unfortunately oh, yeah. a lot of these uh, kids that come out of college recently they don't because they're so damn brainwashed and yeah i think it's a phase i think things run cyclically so yeah. anyways yeah. i just uh it, that that uh a lot of things don't bother me listen i've been i've been outcasted my whole life friends yeah. everything uh, friends sports teams family i've been outcasted I and, and i've, I've been outcasted, exactly honest, and i've like, learned to yeah. embrace it. we've learned to embrace it right i'm not good at being in the cold and the group yeah, and the cool kids exactly. i just like want out i'm like get me out of here i like <laughs> you i like you so so but this one bothered me because mm-hmm. i i i put myself out there to support her and i was like come on dude you guys are gonna pull this week stuff like really really we're gonna be that high and mighty yeah that's... and so i got on there and i tweeted some tweets out and um but uh get let, let, let's not make and we're just gonna move on after this but i'll just say like I said in my tweet, don't get it mistaken. There would be energy here, no matter if it was Drazen or anybody else, no matter who the Republican nominee was, there would have been the same energy. And these people, and one of my biggest problems with Drazen and, and, and political elite like them mm-hmm. is they actually, I don't think they actually believe they're public servants. I believe they actually think that they are elite. 
and yeah. they and they don't have to associate and they don't have to go here and they can do stuff like what they did the other night. Oh, they do. I can tell you. It for just fact they oh do. man, it drives I, me nuts. I man. worked in Sacramento Gosh. and there's, be genuine. Yeah, it's it's not genuine. There's be nothing. genuine, man. So, anyways, <laughs> you know what, Christine, I forgive you and Team Drazen, if you're watching, I forgive you. Because that's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. We forgive you and we're still going to vote for you. And we're still going to tell people to vote for you. And I hope that you guys can get over whatever problem you have with me. Whatever's going on. Let's go out. Let's have a cup of coffee. Let's have a creme brulee. Whatever you guys want to have crepes. I don't know what you guys eat in, over there in the political elite. But we'll have it. <laughs> <sighs> Such drama. Anyways, let's move on. Let's show the Astros slide real quick. Um, so, Heidi, I want to ask you about this. Yeah. There was a uh, couple. So, today was stand against bullying mm -hmm. today. When I saw that graphic, I was like, keep it there for a sec. When I saw that graphic, I was like, oh, great. I can get behind that because I was bullied when I was when I was, you know, <laughs> and, and it wasn't like I like, listen, dude, we're not victims, dude. It's just a fact that we were bullied, that I was bullied as a kid. And, I, and I, it made me who I am today. I'm, I'm grateful for it, which is why I think it's such a sin that they're like teaching these kids to like call the cops whenever they're bullied or like cry victim or whatever. I mean, Anyways, sometimes you need to be bullied. Right. It's like sometimes jerks need to be punched, you know. But I still I, st <laughs> I stand with that. Go to the Mariners one. The Mariners also released. A slide here. But what does that mean? That's incredibly vague. So it says it in the caption. They're standing okay. with ki LGBTQ ki kids, and and you're again, yeah. <laughs> so so here's my, here's my problem with it. Yeah. I want to hear your thoughts, okay? Because mm -hmm. this is, I mean, you're 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 a lesbian. Yes, I am. You have your wife my here. My wife is right there. Yes. Okay. So Oregonian, if you're watching, I'm not a bigot. Okay. <laughs> I did my quota for this. We had a Democrat last week. We're gonna have a black guy next week. Okay. So okay, come on, let's figure it you're out. You're hitting it. Um. So. This is what drives me crazy because it's not just LGBTQ kids that are getting that are getting bullied and, and for some reason they just keep propping up the same people groups over. Why do they? Why Heidi? Why do they do this? Why do they do this? It, and it and it kind of takes away from what you guys also because I, I at some point you guys don't want to be like looked at as as like the outsiders because from what I know about LGBTQ, LGBTQ people is they want to just feel like they just want to feel like they're part of society and just feel and stop being so so like propped up and propped up and so because doesn't that cause more people to hate you guys or whatever or I don't know I mean I personally don't want to associate with anything past you know the B <laughs> at all so I would say that when they're talking about LGBTQ they're talking about TQ they're talking about trans um, primarily because they never said a goddamn thing about lesbians, um, you know. So they're talking about trans kids, and there's an agenda, and that's what they're pushing. That's what they mean. Because I never subscribe to be part of any of those campaigns as a lesbian, and I'm happy to drop right out of it. So you're just an LGB. <laughs> you're just an LGB. There's LGB. I mean, yeah, there's an LGB alliance. You don't agree in the with UK. the T. Why not? Why there's, don't you agree with the T? Because the T has nothing to do with sexuality. Um, I mean, the the there's been lesbians that have been you know, against having the tea and actually gays as well, against having the tea part of it for a long time. There was actually a fight to whether it was going to be LGB or LGBT. And then, you know, eventually they kind of won and it was like, there was like, you know, whatever, 1% of the population or something. It was such a small um, percentage of people that it's like, yeah, you can hang out with us because, you know, you're kind of outcast. There's really nowhere else for you to go. And it was fine. And those were, you know, transsexuals. It was a very rare thing. It was something that adults chose to do and they, you know, medically transitioned and, live their life as the opposite sex and that was a thing that happened rare um, but it happened and then now it's you know trans kids and it's transgender and it's you know non-binary and do you think they're being created today do you think more trans kids are being created today than because it, it's like it's, 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 you know. it's they've done long you know they've done longitudinal studies at this point on things like um tomboys like tomboys are basically being erased um 87 percent of tomboys become lesbians actually um, has been shown. So they actually are gay little girls that they're telling are actually boys, um, which is homophobic as hell, if you ask me. So everything that the T stands for is against biological reality and everything that LGB is for is requires bi biological reality. It's sexual attraction. Um, I don't know about you, but when I have sex, you know, I tend to use my genitals. So it's kind of important part of it, but they're making that seem like that's not important. What's important is how you represent yourself if you look like a man if you look like a woman what does that it's mean it's weird dude um it's weird <laughs> it doesn't mean a it's damn getting thing. so weird um so yeah so they're racing lesbians they're racing little girls um they're turning them into boys so that they can be straight uh, men straight men mm -hmm. um and i'm completely against that because that's homophobic it's going against everything that we actually did fight for was to be 
you know, respected was to be not seen as perverts and like ridiculous, like, you yeah. know, sex addicts that were just going around um, grooming little kids. And now they're literally doing it and using my name to do it. And I, I don't stand for it. I'm happy to drop off of that. Do you, you think know? gay people should, should have the right to, I, I don't like calling, I don't want to say groom, but do you have, have influence on kids? You like, do you think gay teachers should be able to talk about their, their uh, sexuality to their kids? Like, uh, not their sexuality. I don't I don't think it's wrong if they like had a picture of their family or something and it was totally appropriate and it was just like, oh, this is like and it's known that they're gay. I don't think that that's wrong, but it should not be a topic of conversation at all because it's inappropriate and straight teachers aren't being like, yeah, I'm heterosexual. Let me tell you what, you know, being heterosexual is. It's like we don't need to talk about that. It's not <laughs> like that's not appropriate. And kids are going to find out this stuff anyway on the playground. So um, you, it's not necessary. you, you grew up, um, yeah. you grew up a Christian. You grew up in the ev evangelical church. Um, so w when did you, when did you decide uh, that you wanted to just date women? What, what like, how did those, mm. how did that, how did that work? How did that work? I mean, you know, it's quite the process. I mean, I grew up in a very conservative um, I mean, socially at least, uh, family, very Christian. I went to, Did you go to Joel Osteen's church by the, at all? <laughs> oh God, that no, chance? not okay. that kind of, not that kind of evangelical, but okay. yeah, not, not okay, quite, cool. not quite that far. Okay. Um, but you know, evangelical, just basically share the word of God and, you know, convert people and you get saved by, you know, you get saved by Christ. Um, so yeah, I went to a Christian school. I have a Christian family. I mean, they're, you know, they're still what Christian. What do they think about, do they support you or do they love on you still? Yeah, they do. I mean, it was, I mean, gay marriage actually changed it for me because I mean that, you know, it makes it real. I mean, I didn't come out until basically I was about to get married um, to most of my family. I mean, some of them may have known, but what was their reactions? I mean, at that point, it's sort of like, what they are you going to say? Um, yeah, basically, or, or they, maybe they were a little surprised or they thought maybe I was, um, bisexual or something because, you know, that's sort of, how I behaved when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I did date mm -hmm. boys um, yeah. throughout high school and all of that and put on a front. And, you know, I think it actually, I think it actually harmed me. I think that if it was known that like, it was okay for me to be gay um, when I was younger, then I would have been less like promiscuous actually with mm. boys because I was almost trying to prove something yeah. at that time. So I actually think it would have made me, you know, a better person to just be like, it's cool. I didn't need that to come from school or like my teachers or anything necessarily. It would have been nice to just, you know, not have a homophobic family basically. Um, cause they would say things like, it's just comments. It's like homophobia is very like, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of, yeah, it's like under the, you know, it's, what is it? What is it just like, I guess passive aggressive in a way. It's more just like, um, tongue in cheek kind of off comments like that, that are made like, Oh gross. Or, Oh, that's gay. Or like little things that just kind of come up that you're just like, ah, it's just like an insidious kind of thing that's there. It's not like they're like, I hate gay people and we're going to go out and bash them tonight. It's not like that. It's just yeah. these little tiny little things that now I think of differently. But when you're very vulnerable at that age, when you're like 12, 13, you know, and you're, you have all these feelings, all these hormones about yourself and you're like, you feel insecure, then at that time, like these things can hurt you really bad. So I get it how they're like, don't bully like these kids because they feel really crappy about themselves. But it, I mean, at the same time, it's like, that's something that you, you go through. Everybody goes through, yeah, everybody yeah. goes through feeling insecure, whether they're straight, gay, I don't care what. <laughs> and then you get over it and you become an adult and you get more confident and you realize your place in the world. Yeah. And we need to be empowering, I think the youth and not coddling them and not just affirming, um, you know, whatever mental issues that they're having. Um, we yeah. need to be helping them. So, so my thing, so, uh, Tell me this. Yeah. Okay. So, um, first of all, I wouldn't even have you in my house if I didn't, if I thought you were some, you know, whatever, and I hated you and whatever like that. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad, you, I'm glad that we're, we're, something's uniting us, you know, people from different walks of life. Um, I, now let me ask you this. So one of the things that, that I felt like destroyed my marriage was it, it, it was a homosexual thing. It was, um, my ex-wife's, uh, cousin, uh, she's in her twenties and she's, she's a lesbian. We loved on her. We didn't treat her any differently. We hung out with her a lot. Um, so as for me, so I'm a little different on this. Okay. For me, um, I, I have a 14 year old daughter. She was uh, seven, eight, nine at the time. Right. Um, 
growing up, uh, you know, cause we, you know, you, you know about the Christian church, you know what the Bible says about homosexuality, you know, all that, right? Like you, so that, that's something that I go by, mm -hmm. but I also go by, we still love those people. We don't look down on them. That's why I teach my daughter. We don't look down on them because we're all sinners, but you know, we, we also tell truth. We also tell what the Bible says about homosexuality. So I'm raising my daughter here and you know, the, her cousin starts bringing, um, you know, her, her significant other around, okay. um, to the events. And for me, um, just be honest, is that homophobic that I, that I kind of was, I'm raising my daughter to try to be a Christian girl. Um, and I was like, we can't go to events anymore if, the, if, if, if that's going to be there because my daughter has a developing brain and I felt like her seeing that, you know, it, it's not, it, it doesn't adhere to the Bible in my opinion. What, do, what are your thoughts on that? Cause it's been a big, it's been a big back and forth issue and it's not something that I'm like super focused on, but it, it definitely destroyed my, my relationship with my wife's family my mm -hmm. ex-wife's family. Um, even though we or, we always treated her cousin with love, we never told her cousin she had to do this or she had to do that. We never demanded it. Um, we just said, you know, I, I just said, it, it was a really tough situation. I mean, it sounds tough. You're definitely obviously broken up about it and it really affected your life, but you thought it was important enough. So, I mean, I can appreciate that. I, I do think that I just think, um, I just, I just see, you know, a different kind of Jesus, I guess. Like I just kind of picture somebody who, you know, is very welcoming and everybody can sit at the table type of thing. Like what would Jesus do? That was kind of, you know, there's the, the idea that I always held in my head yeah. of Jesus that like, well, he loves you anyway. And like everybody's a sinner, right? He does. And that's just, you know, just because that sin is a little more visible and like, you can kind of, you know, see it like we just don't know the sins of everybody's heart and like what yeah. everybody's thinking so it's kind of like you know it i mean it, that's up to you i mean as a parent it is your you know it's up to you to be like this is where i draw the line personally i'm not yeah. a parent so i can't say a whole lot there but i would say that you know i think it's important to love everybody and Absolutely. i think it's important to accept Absolutely. everybody and i think that if something's making you uncomfortable, it's also important to share that and talk about See, it. It's not so much that made me uncomfortable. Like I said, I, I did, if it well, was just me, I wouldn't have, but yeah. like here I am trying to raise a good Christian girl. And if I'm teaching her to follow the Bible and I'm teaching her and, and but I'm also bringing her so, around and making like, you know, but you it thought was a, that like she was going to become gay because she was seeing it. I thought more of it like as my parent from my parenting point of view, like what kind of parent am I being? If I allow, cause they, you know, she was close to her. She was before she got with her significant other. She was, she was close to her and she, and we knew she was gay all along and I, I still let her take her places and take her out. So it wasn't anything like that. It was just like the, for me, it was the appearance of normalization of something that the Bible clearly says is, is not right. And here I am trying to, trying to raise my daughter in a, you know, to adhere to the Bible. So to me, it was, it was tough, dude. I went back and forth. My ex-wife and I were just like, it was like up and down. It was like, sometimes I was like, tried it. And other times I just felt super guilty. And, but I, I agree with you. We are supposed to love everybody. Everybody is supposed to be at the table and Jesus, that, that is who Jesus is. He still loves you. I sin, you sin, everybody sins. I think the only difference is, is that there, there also is a point of repentance that, that Jesus calls us to, like the woman at the well, you know, the woman at the well is a prostitute. Jesus talked to her still, treated her really kindly, but also called her to repent. So that, that's just where my thing is too. But that, that's why I'm also like, dude, I've done some really messed up stuff in my life. If I, if I announced this, what I've done in my life, <laughs> you guys would all unfollow me because well, right. I've done some crazy stuff, dude. And so my, I, I am no better of a person than you and I'm yeah. more, and that, that's how I truly see truly. it but I, mean, I also adhere want to adhere to God's word and what he says about how relationships are supposed to be that's just me but that's where we sure. can we at least say that we don't agree on the drag thing do you do you agree the oh. kid the kid drag show oh, did God, you hear no. about that I mean okay I don't even like drag I maybe I'm a little different gay person but I've never really been into drag because it's just like I don't know it's like woman face to me it's just it's like, one of those things where like if you want to do it that's your life Okay, I, it's, I, it's I am like a, a little an adult hobby and but, I'm like, that's fine. But yeah, keep it. the kids shows <laughs> lately have been, have been my it's issue. It's been I mean, yeah, that's it's hideous. I mean, I, I've just I have no idea who is taking their kids to these things. And, you know, I don't understand their mindset. Um, <laughs> I just don't get it. It's not even about like it. it's not even about LGBTQ. It's about like kids being exposed to things that they shouldn't be exposed to. Um, I don't know if you heard about the 11 year old drag show that's happening in Oregon this weekend. Have you, can you play that clip real quick? It's even worse pretty much everywhere else in the country, especially in a place like Oregon, where, as Andy Noe reports for the Post Millennial, a bar is uh, planning a drag show this coming weekend featuring an 11-year-old performer. 
and it gets worse. Reading from the article, it says, Controversy has erupted after a pub in Eugene, Oregon, announced it is uh, hosting a drag queen event featuring an 11-year-old child. An investigation by the Post Millennial has revealed that one of the child's drag moms, quote-unquote, was recently charged with child sex abuse offenses. Uh, quote, are you excited for drag queen story time brunch this Sunday morning? Old it's Nick's disgusting. Pub asked in a Facebook announcement. Vanellope is here to show you what, a, what an 11-year-old drag queen can do. Yeah, that, that's sick. I mean, that's so we right. agree on that. I, <laughs> I, I mean, there's so many things we agree on, but I think that that particular it's just like, dude, kids should not be dancing promiscuously. 100%. No, there's I just mean, no way. And what are these parents doing? And it's just it's insane. You know, it's like it's a great question. That's what I uh, ask every time. What are these parents doing? When I see yeah. those videos of those stupid grins on the on the parents faces, I'm like, how can you like what happened? Like, what are they? What, what I would like to know the parents upbringing and like their lives because well, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's been less fathers in the home, and that's been proven mm. that, um, you know, more single moms, less fathers in the home, uh, especially young boys. Um, so if it's drag, if it's like a young boy dressing like a girl, I would venture to guess probably doesn't have a lot of good male role models. Um, they've, it's actually been shown little girls tend to do better, like either way. They're kind of more just resilient. It's just how we're built. But little boys, especially without a father in the home, and there's so many single uh, moms now yeah. there's so many fatherless homes and that affects them and they don't have any good role models they feel very insecure and of course wanting to you know dress like a woman wanting to you know not be a man because they think men are trash because they don't have a father around yeah. i mean that's <laughs> that's a reality that we're dealing with there's a, definitely a crisis with little boys um you know are you children. are you and your wife planning on having kids at all no so you never no we don't want kids what, what's the, what why not it's just not what we want to do with our lives. You it's don't want just... to adopt a little Chinese baby for like $16 million. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I, you hit it on the head. Fatherless homes. It's why Chicago, it's why all the, the black uh, community. And I'm not saying that. These are black people that I'm hearing this from that, that are leaders in the community yeah, of why the facts. black community yeah. is like it, the crime rate is so high. The black on black crime. It's because of fatherless homes. Yeah. It's not. And, and they want to make it about guns. They want to make no. it about Republicans. They want to make it about Trump. But um, gosh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about the breakdown of the family. And I mean, I, I'm kind of a traditionalist. I really respect families, you know, and I think that we should make families stronger and little kids do need positive role models and little boys especially need fathers. It's just been shown that, you know, the bad effects are. What do you plan on point. doing, Heidi? Like uh, mm -hmm. you seem to have a pretty good head on your shoulders. You seem to think with a lot of common sense, which is very <laughs> rare these days. Like what do you plan on doing? You ran for Congress back in yeah. 2020 as a Democrat, right? Yes, as a Democrat, yeah. Yeah. Sadly, but so, yeah. what uh, what are you planning on doing? What's your plans for your life? What, what are your plans? I mean, I'm a business owner right now. I started a business, so I do business development, um, consulting, and services. So I work with clients to basically help them build out their entire prospecting and sales um, wow. programs. So that's um, really my professional life. Um, as far as like creative and politically, not really sure there. I don't have any plans to run again anytime soon. I I feel like if I did you run should. again, I. <laughs> I feel like I would do something a little bit more local. I don't think I would do the congressional race. Mm. Um, I don't know, maybe mayor. We'll see when that comes up. You we'll should. <laughs> I mean, you should hit me up. Let's stay in contact. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I um, I I like. I, I I know we disagree in some areas, okay. but we also ag I agree. In a we actually agree more than oh, I think yeah. we disagree. I I like disagree, and I don't. Right. I'm not the type that you know. That's why I left the left. I mean, honestly, it's like they hate disagreement. It's all about like we all are this little. I just hate that. I love disagreeing because my opinions change on things. I learn new things. If I don't say how I really feel to somebody, like if I don't tell you how I really feel, then how the hell am I ever going to learn anything? Because I'm just going to be parroting what you say and learning nothing and just, you know, I don't I mean, live like that. It used to be in America where we could disagree and still get along. And I now it's great. like, so should, it's so, that's so the beauty polarized. Of this country, like free speech. Like if I want to say something, I should be able to say it. And you could be like, I disagree. I think you're wrong. I yeah. think you're an idiot. And that's great. Like, I love it. Like that's, that's the greatest thing about being here. Well, actually yeah. I did do something last weekend i uh, okay. i i to promote unity i became a democrat for a day <laughs> what um we're gonna see for this video you guys are gonna okay. see it for the first time here um now i will tell you we lost a lot of film sadly we lost a lot of film that we had from that day and, and i <laughs> we put together what we could but we got the most important part which is where tina kotek says she's not going to take the homeless people off the streets you got to see it let's oh, go to it. it mask gang can we like you know like chest bump can we like mask bump like where we touch masks? No? All right. How's it going, everyone? David Medina here with OFA Media. You may be wondering why I'm wearing a mask right now. Well, in order to promote unity, 
I've decided to become a Democrat for a day so I can empathize with our counterparts. I got my mask. We're out here in Portland, Oregon. We're going to a Tina Kotek event. As far as we're concerned, she's our best friend today. Let's go. Tina. You guys voting for Tina? No. No? No Tina? No? No, 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 no. no. We, we cannot even vote. Oh, you, no. that's okay. <laughs> uh, you, you, you can still vote. This is Oregon. You can vote. You don't, you don't need to be a citizen. I really, really just want more crime and homelessness. It's what we thrive on here in Portland. You know what I mean? It gives us our identity. Sir, are you voting for Tina? Are you voting? Oh, I guess, I guess, I mean, I don't know why he, said, why, why he ran for me. Tina's trying to keep him out here. Tina's trying to allow him to pitch more tents. With Tina in office, uh, we have... You can pitch unlimited tents, you know? Tent City Tina. David lost it. She officially lost it. I don't want to take a bunch of photos. I just want to be a thing. Thank you so much. Berkeley! We're supposed to work you up into a frenzy of excitement, <laughs> but you're already there. Thank you. Gathering today, thank you for being here. Really, thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. You could be doing anything. You know, you're doing a right important democracy today. Tina? I, we're gonna have one, but I just want to ask you something. But I'm good. How are you? Thank good you for being. Thank you for yeah, for no I just feel like these, like, like, I'm, is it okay if I record real quick? Because I want to ask you about like some issues that are important to me, like the homeless and stuff. I have a lot of homeless friends. I used to work in downtown Portland. Oh, I appreciate that, but I don't. I don't think we have time for a video. Yeah, we but we can go. do that. So sorry. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to talk to you about homeless. Like, I just. Wa I wanted. To, I wanted to know if you're gonna help them out because this, the, like your opponents are trying to take them off the streets and take away their rights. And I just wondering, how, like, if you're gonna. We're gonna treat people like human beings and make sure they get the help they need. And I'm so sorry, Andrew, you, we gotta go. Can you just I'm like? Really sorry. I know. Well, actually, I do have to go. Can you just let them stay though? Like, I don't want them to get kicked yeah. out of the street. These are my friends. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you letting me have that. Yeah. Can I see that? <laughs> so. <laughs> that's so, some good journalism there. That's. that's dude, expert. thank you. And yeah. I go. I go by Andrew. Um, that's my journalist. My, my Democrat name is Andrew. <laughs> um, so the aide, her aide, really didn't like. She knew. She really didn't like the well, video. Well, she knew. No, she, she was like following me to the elevator and like, oh, so where'd you go to school mm -hmm. and where this now and where that? Knew. And I was like, look, lady, you can't BS a BS her, dude. Like, I can sit here and BS with you all day. Anyways, uh, I didn't disrupt, okay, because I didn't want them to have ammo that, oh, a Drazen person or a Drazen voter, or this guy that was January 6th and this and it was over there disrupting. So I didn't disrupt. I let them have their little event. One thing that I did get sad about was that there was a lot of young girls there. A lot of young girls. Young how? How old? Like I'm talking teen, like 15 to 17, mm -hmm. 18, and enthusiastic girls. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, I've been I've been sounding this alarm for a long time, man. This um, through social media, through the universities, through schools. I mean, there's something going on with our with our with our young women in this in this country. They are like they are like I don't know what That's, they're doing to them. Yeah, I, I think it's just the generation, to be honest. Like mm -hmm. America moves cyclically. I mean, if you look into Strauss Howe generational theory, I mean. I think that we're just in a cycle of crisis mm. and the vibe right now is um, basically the artist vibe, which is the Gen Z vibe. They're artists, they're creative, they're postmodern, they're, you know, we don't have gender, <laughs> we're genderless, we're fluid, we're sexually, that, that's just kind of the vibe because we're in crisis and that's how they correlate. Mm. Um, once we, you know, I mean, it might end in war, it usually does. Um, it's every 80 or so years, there's a major yep. war event. Um, after the war, um, America tends to build up incredibly strong and we have this like boom and that's where things like boomers come from. Where they're, like, do you think they're going to so, be, do you think there's going to be a world war three? I, soon? I hope not. I don't want that. Um, but it's looking not good. It's looking like nuclear war is literally being promoted, um, as a mainstream. <laughs> hey, Dimitri, can you tell your policy. boy, can you tell your boy Putin to chill out a little bit? Okay. I want to have another family or I want to have another wife and eventually more kids. Okay. Can you just tell Putin to calm down? Can you say it in Russian and just send it to him for us, please? Dimitri's our good Russian listen, friend. Yeah. yeah. You speak Russian, say something in Russian to us real quick. God bless you. <laughs> um, hey, Heidi, it's yeah. been real. How can people find you? What are your socials? What's your websites? What are you doing? How can they find you? Sure. Uh, Heidi Brionis um, is That's where what? you can find 
pretty much everything. You can follow me on Twitter. That's probably the best place. I mean, because you can click on my bio. And, and you can super follow her for nine ninety nine. Yeah, a you month. can. And you can hang out with my one super follower who is an elderly <laughs> Japanese man um, with admitted mental health issues. And we just talk about, like, it's really funny. Like, my tweets to Tim are literally like, he's like, what is, what do you mean? Um, she has a penis. And I'm like, <laughs> well, like let me explain. <laughs> like, let me explain what, what the trans oh gosh, movement dude. is. It's actually really hilarious. That's hilarious. But I need more super follow. Honestly, yeah, we, we can yeah, make dude. it. We can make it a lot more fun. Hey, maybe we can uh, put something together someday. You know, all of us uh, smart people here in Oregon, and and you know, create something bigger than the Republicans and Democrats. You know, that'd be that'd be good. You know, you know, no, get in here, get in here, get your I'm get your girl in here. Me, yeah. Come say hi. Come say hi. I mean, I mean, you don't want to <laughs> say hi. I mean, we're going out. We're going out. Say, say hi. Okay, hi. introduce her. Introduce her. This is Jenna. That's my wife. Hi. She's amazing. Appreciate you guys being here. Heidi, it's been an honor. I had a lot yeah. of fun. I, I hope you can come no, back sometime I soon mean, and I'd do this. I mean, I'd love to. Yeah, let's just like, get Drazen across the finish line. Let's basically just keep Kotek out, honestly. Like, I mean, Drazen's cool, but like, honestly, let's just keep, <laughs> we yeah. gotta keep It's all about keeping gotta keep her Tent City out. Tina um, out. You heard her, guys. She doesn't want to, yeah, she wants gotta, to keep the like, people just, out there. Just you heard go her. red down the line as just like, even if you're not, just as an F you this year, you, you just gotta it. do. You just gotta do. I love it. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, FYI, ballots are dropping. They started dropping yesterday. They are going to be dropping throughout the week. Look in your mail. Don't forget, go vote. Your vote does count, okay? Hey, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope you guys had a good time with us. Thank you. You could have been anywhere else, but you were here with us tonight. Thank you to Heidi, her significant Thanks, other. Uh, uh, what's your last name again? Mummy. They got some fun. Heidi Jabronis <laughs> or Briones, and then we got, uh, Mummy. what was it? Jenna Mommy. Jenna, Jenna Mommy. 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 Get me off the air, Gina. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a good night.